الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Probably one of the most important things to most people nowadays is the concept of rizq or sustenance and provision. And when we speak about rizq, we are not speaking only about money. Rather, the concept of rizq in Islam is very beautiful. In the language, rizq means what is giving. Here, what is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is provided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his creation. And from the Islamic point of view, anything that benefits a person or that the person can utilize for whatever he wants is considered a rizq. And thus, the concept of rizq is very wide. So all your abilities, all your belongings, Whatever is under your authority and control is considered rizq. And we are not talking only about the material things. It includes also your intellect, your psychological well-being, the lack of anxiety and uh, worrying and so on, being safe from all of these trials and tribulations. All of that is considered rizq. And that's the rizq. In fact, some scholars state that Allah Almighty gives the exact same rizq to all his creation. Only thing is the proportions are different. Percentage are not the same. Allah Almighty knows best. But Allah Almighty told us in the Holy Quran that Allah Almighty expand his sustenance for some people and on the other hand contract it for some people. When Allah Almighty mentioned there is one beautiful verse in the Holy Quran. قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكِ تُؤْتِ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتَنْزِعُ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ مِمَّنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ Say, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and every believer behind him, O Allah Almighty, you are the owner of all ownership or all kingdoms. You give authority or kingdoms or ownership or mastery to whomsoever you wish. And you take it away from whomsoever you wish. And you honor whomsoever you wish. And you dishonor whomsoever you wish. So far, clear. Then Allah Almighty says, in the same dua, we have to say that in your hands is all goodness. Okay, what about the evil? That says this is not evil. You think it's evil, but it's not evil. This is also good. When Allah Almighty takes something from someone, this is also good. For him and for him and it. When Allah Almighty gives someone something, this is also for them. It is always khair. That is why Allah Almighty mentioned only be al khair. In your hands is goodness. He does not mention any other thing. Ah. So now when we understand this, this is the concept of rizq. It is slightly different from another concept that is very important also repeated in the Holy Quran called kasb. Kasb is whatever you own or under your direct authority is considered kasb, even if you don't utilize it and even if you don't benefit from it. When you think about it now, for most people, which one is bigger? Their kasb or their rizq? Uh, their kasb. Most of their money, most of their abilities is of no use. So they have it, it's already there, but they're not using it. So when you use that kasb, it turns into the practical risk that we are talking about. Is it clear? Why we have to say that? Because we have to elaborate a little about the concept of rizq. Thus, it will be very easy for you, inshallah, to follow up or to understand the wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that is happening, at least part of it. The rizq, after we have said, the rizq can be halal and can be haram. Rizq can be halal and can be haram. What is the concept of halal and haram? Anything that is permitted in Islam to use is halal. Anything that is forbidden in Islam to use is haram. It might seem size or sound, sounds easy, but it's, it is actually very flexible. Means sometimes a forbidden thing can become halal if there is a need, for example, or if there is a necessity. And a halal thing can be turned into haram if the person is taking it in a wrong way or 
in order of direction. So the concept of halal and haram is according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decide, not you. Is it clear? So after specifying that the rizq can be halal and can be haram, this is about the ruling from the Islamic point of view, we have another categorization of rizq. There is a rizq that benefits the body. There is another rizq that benefits the deen, the religion. For example, iman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided you to iman and to believe. This is already one of the greatest rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many people do not appreciate that. This is already a great blessings and providing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you. Yes? There are people in this world who are much more intellectual than you, much more bright-minded, much more brought up in a better way, in a better society, better whatever you might think. They are better than you in almost every category imaginable, is it? There are people who are better than each one in every category. Not necessarily a single person is carrying that. But then you find some of them worshipping animals or worshipping idols or worshipping different creatures from Allah or things that they made themselves. So what happens? Where, where is all that intelligence? Where is the brightness? Where did it go? And then you realize it is not you. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is giving you. It's a choice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is a, some of it benefits the body, some of it benefits the religion. Is it clear? Now, there are among them rizq that does not benefit either of these. Harms the body, harms the religion. For example, imagine something like that. Any haram thing or taking a haram way that is unhealthy. So it's bad for your body, bad for your religion. We have on the other hand something that is beneficial to both of them. It benefits the body and it benefits the religion. Out of all of these, which one is the best? The last one. The one that benefits you in this world, benefits you in the hereafter, benefits your body and your religion. And the term used in the Holy Quran for that by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is halalan tayyiba. Halalan, religion. Tayyiba, body. Clear? In fact, even if tayyib is used by itself, the concept of tayyib from the Islamic point of view, from the Islamic in the Holy Quran, is enough to combine both of them. Because it has to, the concept of halal you already know, right? Concept of halal in Islam, anything that Allah Almighty did not forbade. So initially, everything is halal. Clear? Initially, everything is halal. So if we discover a new fruit, a new animal, a new something, whatever we don't know, the original ruling in Islam is that initially it's halal. Unless proved that it is haram somehow. But the initial ruling is that this is automatically halal. Is it clear? Some people might, when you ask them about halal, they think halal is what Allah Almighty, for example, mentioned as halal. Not necessarily. Halal is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not forbid. Clear? We come to the other part which is tayyib. Tayyib is what benefits the body or the person, what is beneficial and useful for the person. And there is another one. There's, and he likes it or he accepts it or he enjoys it. Why is that? Sometimes you might take things that you hate or do them. You hate them, but you still do them. For example, some medication. You don't like the medication, you don't want to take them, but you still do it. And it is beneficial for you. It's useful for you, isn't it? But that is not usually acceptable. This is not tayyib. Interesting. It has part of it, yes. The most important part of it, yes. But it's not the complete part of it. When both of them are together, the enjoyment, the, like, uh, the likeness, and the benefit and usefulness, that makes it tayyib. When you go through the Holy Quran, you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us to eat from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided for us, what is halal and tayyib. Both of them are used, always. Nowadays, sadly, especially when it comes to food, most people are taking what? The second part of tayyib only. Fast food, for example, or they call it, or junk food, or some harmful things, and so on. Drinks or food, and so on, right? This is tasty. Liked by the person, yes, but is it beneficial or useful for him? No. In the long run, at least it's not. 
Is it haram? No, it's not haram. That is why we say we find halal. It's already halal. But it's not completely good. You understand? After all these classifications, as we said, halal and tayyib, when it combines both of them together, this is the best. How important is that? It is so important that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the prophets and messengers to seek it. And in the same place in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the all people. And this is one of the surprising verses in the Holy Quran. When it comes to food, eating and drinking, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to all humanity, not to the believers only. Ya ayyuhal nas, all mankind, all people, all humanity, eat from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided in this world that is halal and tayyib. But the believers, they don't have the concept of halal and haram. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not telling them this concept. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them what is beneficial for them. Means what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade, it's not even good for you, even if you are a disbeliever. It's not for your body as well. So for the believers, it's already good for the body and the religion. For the disbelievers, if they follow the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided, it is already good for them, this one. And that is why subhanAllah, even nowadays, the concept of halal industry and halal food and halal uh, con consumables and so on is finding uh, a food worldwide even by non-muslims because it has to be what it has to be tayyib you understand so you guarantee automatically that there is no harm in it it is beneficial it's useful and it is good for you in the long run it is liked by you no bad treatment was done to any of the animals or the creatures or in the manufacturing process and so on. It has to have these elements. So automatically when it is halal, it means it fulfills these. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind. These guidelines are for the benefit of you as people, as humanity. You want to live a happy, long and healthy life, you have to follow these guidelines. That is the concept of halal and tayyib as we mentioned. Now on the other hand, uh, we, we mentioned that the Prophet and Messenger is used to them. The thing that you process yourself and provide yourself and you directly, you are, you are involved with yourself is the best out of all of them. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in a beautiful hadith, no human being eats anything that is more tayyib, beneficial and useful and tasty and so on, than what he does with his own hand, what he manufactures himself, what he process himself, what he does. What they call nowadays, is probably the natural or an organic and so on. What do you hear so them? The Messenger of Allah Sallam said, and Dawood alayhi salam, the Messenger of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, used to eat from the fruit of his hand, what he manufactures or what he does himself. Now, there are two understandings in this hadith. One, the literal understanding. You have to process and try and provide everything that you do, so it has to be fresh and natural and so on. One understanding. But the second understanding is broader, and this is more closer to the truth, means what you get with your own work. You work, anything that is halal, good work, whatever money you get, and eat from that. It means do not transgress and take the money of other people, legally or illegally. Do not accept favors from people in the territory. And do not go and beg, for example, or ask them. Do it yourself, work yourself, eat from that yourself. Both understandings are valid. Is it clear? Now, the second understanding is supported by another hadith from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Remember we say the best, the most tayyib part of whatever you, is what you get for your own hands? What about if somebody, for example, is old and he cannot work? Somebody is unable to work. Disabled person, for example. Or, most commonly, the father, when he grows old, he, when he retires, he's not working anymore. And most of the time, the children are working, his own children. And they are providing for him. So does it mean that his kasb now is no longer tayyib? No. This is still the fruit of his own action. This is still his own kasb. Why? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he mentioned, he says, and the son of a man is part of from his gaining or kasb. So do not think that when your father is asking you for something or you are giving him something willingly, directly, do not think that you are doing him a favor. No, you're not. You are not. 
And that is why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started, we say to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are asking you about what to spend of goodness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started saying say to them, whatever type of goodness or amount of goodness you spend, then to the parents. Start with your parents. And then the relatives. And then he mentioned the needy people. Yes. It's part of that. So it's already within the concept of their own handwork or uh, providers. After we're speaking about the concept of halal and tayyib, we have to mention, of course, the opposite, which is haram. There is a stern warning about the concept of haram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Holy Quran, do not eat or consume the wealth of each other illegally, get forbid. In a haram way. It's not allowed. Is this serious? This is very serious. So much so, a man came to the Messenger, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no man ever takes the right of another Muslim, illegally, takes the right of another Muslim. Except that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has uh, 